we're concentrating on contrarian picks, high upside risky picks, and also punts for GPPs. Ladies and gentlemen, Couch Fam, these are my NFL DFS picks for week 13 of DraftKings. Okay, let's talk about quarterbacks. Now, this whole video is going to be set off with the quarterbacks I'm going to talk about. Um, I, I don't have a ton, but I, I have more than you'd probably want. I narrowed down the running backs. All the other positions I've actually narrowed down quite a bit. Um, but usually how I approach a lineup is with my stack. I'm like, okay, I want this quarterback stacked with this receiver. Sometimes it's an obvious receiver. Sometimes it's a less obvious receiver, maybe like Tannehill and Corey Davis, for example, uh, versus Tannehill and A.J. Brown. So there's uh, obviously elite options this week. Um, Wilson, Kyler Murray, super risky, could be a bit contrarian, so we're going to like that as an elite option. Even Deshaun Watson, who lost all his weapons, he's still projected to do some things and put the team on his back and then we got Herbert going against the Patriots so a lot of risky elite options but my favorite option is going to be Aaron Rodgers out of the more obvious elite guys and that's 6800 going against the Eagles I think we can say what what are you most certain about this game? I think the two things we'd be the most certain about is that the Packers will win, they'll find a way to score, and Aaron Rodgers will do well. Because it's really tough to predict how good Jamal Williams will perform, how well uh, Aaron Jones will do. I think it's safe to say though the Packers will find a way to win. The Eagles, they might do a couple things they are harder to predict. We know they're a bad team and they're inconsistent. Like from quarter to quarter, from drive to drive, they're very inconsistent. So a little bit tougher to predict what the Eagles will do. Maybe they'll keep it close. Maybe this will be a four-point game or a seven-point game or could be one of those games where the Packers are up by almost three touchdowns. Uh, really could. So those are the two things that I would say we're fairly confident in. Aaron Rodgers should do well in real life. You know, I'm not talking just fantasy numbers. Um, the guy doesn't throw a lot of picks. He's an MVP candidate. I'd say he's number three on my MVP candidate power rankings. Um, someone uh, got a little bit angry and said uh, he should be number two, which is which is fine. It's a great argument that he should surpass Wilson. So right now I got it Mahomes, Wilson, then Rodgers. Uh, and then number four probably would be Kyler. He's kind of fallen off a little bit. Um, yeah, so with that being said, um, that's my favorite elite option. Playing it kind of safe out of those guys. And I don't like to talk a lot about elite options, but I, I did want to mention uh, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, he's, just, he's just been playing so well. Pretty good upside and a great floor this year. He's had, what, one or two bad games? He's had one really bad game, and maybe he's had one not so good game. Yeah, it looks like only one bad game. So he had only one one horrible game against Tampa Bay, he got five points, and then only one other game against the Lions that was under twenty. He got nineteen point two that game. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so this is a safe option. I'm gonna say that I'm not going out on a limb. Since uh, he's pretty much guaranteed to get you 20 fantasy points. That's pretty tough. And that's pretty much what he is. Guarantee 20 plus fantasy points. And he's got Lazard back. He's got Tanya. And they're pretty much full strength. He's got um, Equinemius St. Brown. He's got FVS, Devontae Adams. Um, and all his running backs to throw to. It's looking good. Okay. So... Look, this is likely going to be a Derrick Henry game. Derrick Henry, hottest running back right now, hands down, with Kamara falling off, Zeke falling off, these other guys injured. I think Ryan Tannehill, you know, safely could be, sorry, <laughs> Derrick Henry could safely be the hottest running back 
right now. But there is a chance that there's two other scenarios that can happen other than Derrick Henry taking over the game and just Derrick Henry all day, every day, every down, early down, late game, early game, halftime, just take it over. Um, both Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry could have a good game. That's very likely. Also, there could be another scenario where Derrick Henry doesn't finish off the drives. He can get you 101 rushing yards, you know, and just no touchdowns. That's also a scenario not as likely, but we did see it happen before. Um, and in that scenario, I would really bank on Ryan Tannehill going off and getting you maybe even 30 fantasy points. Now, he's, you know, very, pretty consistent, pretty reliable, usually doesn't have a ton of upside, but we're looking at a Browns tight ends game where there's not going to be a ton of defense, and I know the tight ends are going to score. It's probably going to be Derrick Henry, but it could be Ryan Tannehill. Also, Denzel Ward is out. This tremendously boosts A.J. Brown and Corey Davis both of them because they're going to find a way they're going to have to find a way to defend these wide receivers. Now, Jonu Smith is out, but I mean, he had zero targets last game, so I don't think it's a huge downgrade. What I'm trying to get at is if you want to pick Ryan Tannehill and stack him, I think the stacks are pretty cool. You can stack him with AJ Brown, the obvious. You can stack him with Corey Davis, the cheap option. Or you can and or you can stack him with Anthony Furkser, minimum price tight end, and so you can do a double stack, uh, which means you you pick Tannehill and two of his receivers, or just do a normal stack where you pick Tannehill and one of his receivers. But you know, I I do like the double stack idea with Furkser because if he gets in the end zone, you just got a minimum price tight end that scored a touchdown. I'd say that's going to really boost your lineup tremendously. And that's a Ryan Tannehill plus Ferkser stack. That smells like GPP to me. I don't think you would want to do that in a cash game. That doesn't make sense. Maybe you would. I don't know because he's cheap. Um, but I think that's more of a GPP stack. And I don't like to stack too much in, in cash games anyway, which I don't, I don't even play cash games anymore really. Um, I keep them to a minimum. I don't play on this site cash games much anyway. So um, next quarterback I got is Derek Carr. Maybe there's a small trend here. At least the trend should be for Contrarian. Um, he did well against the Chiefs. He did bad against the Broncos. He did bad against the Falcons. So maybe he has one good game, one bad game. We've seen that he is volatile, so putting up four fantasy points putting up 30 fantasy points. He's done both. And going against the Jets, if the Raiders' defense isn't able to stop the Jets as well as most other teams, this could be a sneaky shootout. Look, I don't like Derek Carr. Um, really, there's two reasons why I'm bringing him up. One, he's going to be contrarian because he really hurt a lot of the fantasy community's feelings last week against the Falcons, putting up a four-point poop point. So he's going to be contrarian, and he's got a good matchup. So those are two pretty good reasons to pick Carr. And then I guess the third reason I, I would be kind of, yeah, I mean, it, you know, that's not, I, I'd be stretching for this reason. I, I mean, I don't, I don't really think this is a really good reason, but he, his price isn't that expensive. Um, now I like to keep it real. That's not a really good reason. Cause if his price was expensive, I'd be like, Oh, he's going to be even more contrarian. Um, so yeah, you know, the price really doesn't matter, but he is a cheap to medium priced quarterback. And we got Jared Goff who I actually really like, I mean, this really makes sense to me. Um, he's been hot and cold. So we've seen him put up 28 fantasy points against a decent Bucks defense. Now the Bucks defense has not been good the past couple games, and that's probably due to the strategy they've been using, which is dumb. <laughs> and that's probably I want to chalk it up to that. Um, that's the that's my theory on why the Bucks defense hasn't been that good, especially their their pass defense. Actually, their run defense looks great. Still, um, always look great. 
and and it still looks great is their pass defense and the Niners have really known how to play the Rams my god you know Mike told me the other day the Niners beat the Rams four the last four out of four games Wow, that's pretty impressive, especially with all their injuries. So anyway, similar situation to Derek Carr. Derek Carr put up four fantasy points last week. Jared Goff put up six fantasy points last week. So I think we'll be able to get him at a decent ownership percentage. Like He's not going to be contrarian, but he's definitely not going to be popular either. And that's what makes him decent for GPP. The price is right. I like the matchup against the Cardinals. I think any receiver, even the tight end, could be okay because they have two tight ends. I think Josh Reynolds, Woods, and also Cup, all three of them have good matchups. Maybe we might see a revival of the Rams tight ends. I doubt it because they haven't done much this whole year. But what I'm saying is I like the passing game against the Cardinals. I like... I don't like the rushing attack as much against the Cardinals for the Rams. So Jared Goff, I feel like um, for GPP standards, I feel like he is safe, even though he is volatile and whatnot. Like I trust this. What I'm trying to say is I trust this pick a lot more than I trust the Derek Carr pick. I don't nobody trust Derek Carr this week. Uh, I, I think he's going to be good against the Cardinals. I, I really do. Um, I guess you got to kind of hope that the Cardinals are able to move the ball and put up some points quickly. That way this game's a little bit more up-tempo, a little bit higher scoring, because that's what we'd really need for Goff to be a top four or top five quarterback. Remember when we're doing GPPs, our goal uh, in, a, in a week is for our quarterback to be top four. That's our, If you got a top four quarterback, it's usually good enough to hit big on a GPP. Sometimes you need... You know, the number one QB, sometimes the number five QB is good if he's cheap. So um, it really depends. But usual, my usual goal is to have a top four quarterback in the main slate GPPs. And one more quarterback I got, and this is purely a uh, good value play. I think it's very difficult for Trubisky not to reach value. Um, as far as the trust, honestly, it's really there because the Lions are horrible against the pass. They're horrible against the run. They're a horrible organization. And Trubisky has played exceptionally well against the Lions every time. Like, there's really no, like, he's been great. He put up 25 fantasy points against them week one. This one's in Chicago, and if Akeem Hicks is out, that's going to call for a little bit more potential to be a shootout because Akeem Hicks is the, one of the Bears' best players, period. That's how good that guy is, and he's known for stopping the run. So if Akeem Hicks is out, which he is questionable, this could be a little, you know, it could make it a little bit easier for the Lions to score. Maybe the Bears call a few more uh, pass plays, and... Yeah, I mean, this is really, that's really all it is, guys. Matchup's good. Price is amazing. Trubisky's done well against the Lions. So his upside is not as high as Rodgers, even Deshaun Watson, um, Kyler, Wilson, probably, yeah, not even Herbert. So he doesn't have the upside as those top five or six quarterbacks this week. But. His price is way cheaper. So those quarterbacks I listed are 7000 while Trubisky is 5400 And this could be that one rare week where the fifth or sixth quarterback is good enough to cash in if the rest of your lineup is on fire. All right. So that I know that was a lot of talk about quarterbacks, but um, I felt like it was good to preview and set up you know, for this whole slate this week. Also, just another side note, like I said in my waiver video on Tuesday, um, the weather looks perfect yet again. I mean, it looks just absolutely outstanding for December. I don't think any games will be affected by the weather. No no wind. You know, there's some dome games. And also, um, I don't even think there's any rain or anything. Like, my God, what's going on here? Okay, so for running backs... Uh, Christian McCaffrey's on buy, by the way. Um, the top two expensive options to me, and DraftKings does this a lot, uh, they they make their 
expensive option, super expensive, and their cheap option, super cheap. They've been known to do that. Of course, it's different, but that's basically the the theory. Other websites with salary cap might have the prices closer together. Um, but right now, Dalvin Cook and Derrick Henry, let's just say they're 9000 They're nearly twice as expensive as a lot of these running backs that I like that are close to 5000 and so if my running back is able to get 17 fantasy points, that's going to equal the same exact value as Dalvin or King Henry getting 30 fantasy points. And this week, I think I'm going to fade these two. Now, if they get close to 40 fantasy points, I will regret this. I will be wrong. But that's very rare that that you'll be able to get that. You know, what's the what's the odds of them getting that? It's about 10%. It, it's pretty low. So one out of 10 chance Derrick Henry is going to put up, let's just say, you know, 37 fantasy points or more. And about the same for Dalvin Cook, um, who just hasn't been quite looking like himself lately a little bit. He's a little bit tired, a little bit banged up. Um, two great plays, though. Like I, I like them, but like I said, I think they'll get 30 fantasy points. I don't think they'll get 34 fantasy points. It's just very tough to put up those type of numbers. Like I said, if they get if they get that, like I, let's say if they get more than 34 fantasy points, that's gonna be looking great, and you probably want them in your lineups uh, for for GPPs. But I think we'll be able to find running max for nearly half the price that can get us 16 or 17 fantasy points. And all this is assuming these guys are going to even get 30. Like, that's still a tough task. You know, they got to get those touchdowns and those big runs. And so this is where I'm living right now. I'm living right here. You know, I don't know. I don't know why. This is my gut. My gut is saying... That Miles Gaskin is going to be contrarian. I could be totally wrong here. I don't know. I, it's just a gut feeling that I got. And, you know, sometimes you just, you know, <laughs> I'm just going with my gut. Like, that's it. I, I, I don't know why. So the price is good. Not great. You know, there's some other options there. Like So, so the price is a good value if you just look at the price. But there are cheaper options that people are going to like. Maybe that's why I, I just feel like he's going to be ignored. So anyway, Salvin Ahmed is looking like he's out. Matt Breda is out. Um, you know, it's really just Miles Gaskin. It's looking like Miles Gaskin, who is on IR designated to return. It's looking like he will be back. And I believe Saturday, I'm recording this Friday, they'll let us know like, hey, he's going to play this week. So we'll see. Um, it's looking like he's going to play and it's looking like there's not going to be too many other running backs. Also, Jordan Howard's not in the picture either. So, <laughs> um, it's really like Patrick Laird is, uh, is the number two running back and, uh, DeAndre Washington too. So he could be eased back in, but I don't think so. I think he's had enough time to, uh, to be acclimated and he's going against the Bengals should be a good game script for him. Um, yeah, 5,900, Mr. Gaskin. Uh, Chalky, Chalky, Chalk, Devontae Booker, Josh Jacobs is out. We think Devontae Booker is going to be the man, priced at only 5500 He could run, he can catch, and the matchup is great. But he will be Chalk. So an easy pivot from that will be one below, David Montgomery, who now I, I have this guy in one league, in a season-long league. It's a very important league. And I'm trying to temper expectations, but he looked really good against the Packers. And I hope this trend continues. I mean, the man did really well in a bad game script. Over 100 rushing yards. It was very impressive. And I'm not saying like this guy is, you know, like Dalvin Cook or Derrick Henry. I'm just saying, you know, from a guy we're used to getting eight fantasy points, uh, so you to get 28 fantasy points is just really good. And uh, it's very surprising. And for his expectations, um, that's just incredible. So 
He's not going against a tough defense. As a matter of fact, he's going against like the worst run defense. Maybe the Texans are are thirty second, whatever. Uh, but it's it's like they're interchanging, right? Texans, Lions. Anyway, Lions they suck at uh, against the running back position. They allow a ton of points to the running back position. And David Montgomery is a clear cut workhorse. I think he'll get a lot of run. He'll get a lot of touches. He'll get 95% of the snaps at the running back position. And uh, he's great. You know, if you don't want to go with the chalk or you're doing multiple entries um, with uh, Devontae Booker, you can go with Montgomery. Also have Kareem Hunt at 5,400. Last game, one of the one of the one of the few games where Chubb outscored Kareem Hunt. Maybe roles will be reversed, especially if the Browns are playing from behind. Kareem Hunt is the better pass catching back. He gets in there for pass catching situations. So it's gonna start out with Chubb. He's the better runner. He's incredible. Uh, but it might end up being Kareem Hunt in the second half of that game against the Titans. Uh, and then we got uh, Gio Bernard who. Uh, maybe you guys, you know, I bring him up. Maybe you guys are rolling your eyes right now and you hate it. Oh, Geo sucks. This and that. Exactly. He's going to be contrarian. He's going to be cheap. He is a, whether you like it or not, he is the Bengals workhorse. I checked the snap count. He's the man. And he also is a really good pass catcher. Now with the, you know, Joe Burrow out. Okay. Look, everything is screwed up. Uh, Gio Bernard sucks now, Bengals suck now, and it's looking bad. But to be able to get a workhorse who can catch, going against a defense that's really good but does allow some points to running backs, it's probably their only weakness is uh, allowing points, fantasy points to the running back position. Um, This is a rare opportunity. Price is beautiful. Snap count is beautiful. Pass catching ability, game script immunity is beautiful. So with all that there, it's going to be hard for me to resist putting Gio Bernard at least in a couple lineups. I'm going to. Like, I'm going to do it. I know you guys will. I know you guys might doubt me, but I'm going to do it. I, I think it's going to be worth it in GPPs. Now, in cash games, this is stupid as heck. Don't do this. <laughs> Don't put anything on the line for Gio Bernard in the bungles. Don't do it. Uh, but for me and GPPs, I'm going to do it. For wide receivers, lots of good elite options. We're going to go into the less um, common options, the not so obvious guys. And of course, we're starting off with the obvious one here. But I think Brandon Cooks is clear cut my number one option on the Texans uh, uh, over David Johnson, over Duke Johnson, over Kiki QT, all these guys. Brandon Cooks should be matched up against. Um, the Colts' worst cornerback. I don't know. They might try to double him, but his price is pretty good. He'll probably be a little bit chalky. Might be a good, um, you know, might be too much ownership there. But I, I do really like his targets and opportunities uh, this game. I just wanted to say that really quick. I do project him to be the best uh, Texan skill player other than Deshaun Watson. Here we go. Guys, I'm talking about a contrarian. Lions, they're boring. You know, this is not the sexy pick. He's actually screwed us over last time we picked him. But, oh boy. With Kenny Galladay out and Amendola finally healthy, also could be matched up against one of the weaker corners of the Bears. There should be a lot of opportunity. As long as Stafford's playing and throwing the ball, should be a lot of opportunity here. Also, DeAndre Swift is out, and if he's not, he's not going to play much. And that, and he's a really good pass catching running back. So we can see Danny Amendola get seven plus targets. I don't know, seven plus targets, decent quarterback, thirty seven hundred bucks. That's it. I think I would take that. I do like that. It's a, it's a boring option that's going to be overlooked for sure. Um, again, you're getting a cheap player, a contrarian player who can get seven plus targets. I love it. Um, so a lot of people will be picking Kiki Cutie, uh, 3,500. Good option. 
Some people who think they're bold are going to be picking Colin Johnson, 3,300, rookie wide receiver for the Jaguars. Look good, but um, they're more healthy this week. They got DJ Chark back. I'm going right in, in between those two prices, and let me just scroll just to show you how it looked. This is the view that most people are going to be looking at. Um, I'm all about the psychology here. So, you know, just below him, you got Colin Johnson right here. Just above this guy, I'm about to point out, you got um, Kiki Cutie up here. And this is the guy I'm looking at. Allen Robinson has a knee injury. Should be minor, but he's technically questionable. And Nagy did not say if he's going to play or not. So we got Darnell Mooney. Now, Darnell Mooney's also questionable. What does that mean? Less ownership, more contrarian. Uh, Matt Nagy says this is nothing. This is a precaution. He'll be good to go. So we got a guy with the questionable tag. We got a guy who's super cheap. We got a guy with Trubisky playing last week. Got nine targets. The talent is there. I don't know if Trubisky can hit him. But, oh, boy, if you're looking for a contrarian punt play, this is your man. Darnell Mooney telling you people are going to be picking cutie. I'm going to be picking Mooney. Um, here we go. I hope, uh, this one pans out. This is my ultimate, uh, punt wide receiver of the week. So, um, let's move on to tight ends. Lots of good options here. I did want to point out two options though. I just have a gut feeling about Jordan Aikens. It's been reported that he might be playing in the slot now. And with all the injuries to the Texans, we got David Johnson looking like he's going to come back. Maybe he's eased in. But I'm mostly talking about Will Fuller, six-game suspension, Randall Cobb injured, and Kenny Stills is cut, no longer on the team. That's a lot of wide receivers that are gone. And so Jordan Aikens, I think the upside is there for sure. Um, as far as his ownership, I think it'll be around medium. I think he, he won't be heavily owned and, uh, you know, he won't be a chalk, but he won't be super contrarian either. I think enough people will pick him, but I think we'll get in at a, at a fairly contrarian ownership. I, I do. I, I would consider him more of a contrarian than I'd consider Aiken's chalk. That's just what I suspect. That's what I'm thinking. And then we got... Anthony Ferkser, 2,500. We talked about him earlier. Jono Smith is out. Anthony Ferkser is going to get a lot more targets, a lot more snaps. And he's looked good in his limited time. Last time Jono was out, he got 28 fantasy points. So, you know, this time when Jono's out, he'll probably do nothing. <laughs> That's how it goes. But he is minimum price. Definitely worth considering. Defenses. Um... I narrowed it down to three, and then I got two other ones for you guys as alternates. So um, the Dolphins D, my number one defense, but they're pretty close. And then the most expensive at 4,400 going against the Bungles, but they're really close as far as projected fantasy points to the Seahawks. That's 1,100 cheaper. So um, three-fourths of the price here, you know, so that's 25% off the price. You can get the Seahawks going against a Danny Dimeless Giants. Hmm, that's pretty good. I guess this will be my number one defense based off value because you're going to get a lot more value out of the Seahawks. Um, and then I really like the Bears D with no Galladay, with Swift basically being a non, like doesn't even matter if he plays or not. It seems like he's just poor guy. I mean, I feel bad for Swift. Bro, Swift just... Rest and get healthy, man. I don't know what's going on with the Lions over there. Um, but get, especially if it's a concussion or brain injury, um, sit out and get healthy. But like, you guys ain't winning a Super Bowl this year. And uh, you got a long future ahead. You're going to be on the Lions next year, and they're going to need you. Anyway, um, Bears 3,100 going against the Lions. I, I have a bunch of cheap defenses i wrote down in my notes but i'm probably not going to use them unless i really have to if i'm doing a lot of multi-entry uh it's just it's a total crapshoot with these cheap ones but i mean i guess you could use it the two that i would sort of recommend other than my top three right there bears seahawks and dolphins uh, my other two options could be the packers going against carson wentz 
and the Raiders going against the Jets. Now, I, I don't like the price, and I don't trust these two defenses as much as those other three, but I did want to give you guys uh, some more options for sure. I didn't bring it up here, but I'm going to right now. I did want to give a shout-out to new patrons. Um, we have the Patreon. It is uh, links below in the description, patreon.com slash fantasy couch. And it's only, what is it, like three, three, $3.69 a month. You get access to exclusive videos. Right after these, I do a exclusive live stream every Friday evening for Patreon only. Um, you'll get uh, direct access to me, priority when asking questions or you want a second opinion, you can message me. You also get special role in our Fantasy Couch Discord and just a bunch of other perks. And it's a great way to help support and it's super cheap. What does that come out to like 10 cents, 12 cents a day or something? That's super cheap, man. Less than a co coffee a month. Um, and so, yeah, thank you, Ashley, uh, Ken and Peter. I saw you paid with euros, so I assume you're in Europe. Thank you guys so much for helping support the couch. I wish you guys all good luck this week. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also subscribe to our second YouTube channel, Fantasy Couch Podcast. That also is a great free way to help support us. And thank you guys so much. Smash that thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thumbs down if you did not. Let's go get that double.